Judah went to God in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. He said, said to God, God, we are in trouble. Three people, three nations have come to fight us. And we cannot stand them. God said, do you know what? Why don't you dance for me a little bit? Uh, why don't you sing for me a little bit? How many of you know the story? They came to complain that they have a problem. And God said, if, if you dance for me a little bit, I can take over the trouble. You are going to say, Father, nothing will stop my praise for you. Nothing will stop my swagger for you. I will praise you for as long as I have breath. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. No matter what you are going through, no matter the struggle, no matter the disappointment, no matter the pain, that nothing will stop your praise of the Lord. Nothing will stop your swagger for God. You will praise him for as long as there is breath in you. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. I will praise you for the rest of my life. Nothing will stop my praise for you. Nothing will stop my singing and dancing for you. Nothing will stop my swagger for you. For as long as I live, your praise will be in my mouth. For as long as there is breath in me, your praise will be in my mouth. There is nothing that can stop my praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. For as long as you keep your promise and you continue to praise the Lord, whatever comes your way, you will overcome. I say it one more time. Whatever may come your way, you will triumph. Your joy shall be full. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And while she's standing, please open with me to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. And together we read. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. This morning, I am led of God to continue in the series, May Your Joy Be Full. I say it one more time, may your joy be full. Today is part two, and we shall continue for as the Lord leads. And whether you are here physically on site, or you are joining us from around the world, in Australia, in Canada, UK, America, Japan, wherever you are, may the power of God reach you as well in Jesus' name. And for those of you who are privileged to be physically here and to get an opportunity to receive the sermon via your phone, the WhatsApp, or Facebook, I want to encourage you to always please forward that sermon to somebody you might be saving some precious lives. You might be saving some precious lives. I pray that you will allow God to use you in Jesus' name. And today, God will make your joy full. Number one, patience is a sign of wisdom. Patience is a sign of wisdom. If you want your joy, your joy to be full, you must understand the direction to joy. Many of us are too impatient for your joy to be full. You want it, but you don't know how to get it. A few things that the Lord laid in my heart to share with you. The first, patience is a sign of wisdom. I will use the story of the prodigal son to bring the word. In Luke chapter 15, verse 12, Luke 15, verse 12. He said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that followed to me. And the father divided unto them his living. You see, sometimes we are too much in a hurry for our own benefit. 
You may be here today thinking that this story is about the prodigal son. Thinking that this message is about the prodigal son. But the message is about who? It's about you. It's really about you. Patience is a sign of wisdom. And before you take any action, think. You may want to write that down. Think before you act. Give yourself the opportunity to properly reflect before you take that action you're about to take. It's okay to say to them, let me come back to you tomorrow. Sleep over it. You don't always have to give an answer immediately. When you give yourself opportunity to think, you are likely to make a better decision. The second thing under this point, pray before you act. Many of us, we act first and then we pray later. It is in the place of prayer that you will hear the voice of God. Hello? It is in the place of prayer that you, you hear the voice of God. That decision you are about to make, please pray about it so that you can receive the leading of God. And then lastly on this point, seek godly counsel before you act. Seek godly counsel before you act. I have been a recipient of this thing I'm telling you. Many times in my life, many times, I'd wanted to take some serious decisions, life-changing decisions. But each time, I always remember to say, let me talk to this, let me talk to this person. And the outcome is a different decision. Because the Bible says, high on, sharpen it, high on. How many of you think you know it all? You don't need anybody to advise you. Can I see your hand up? You really don't need anybody to advise you. You know it all. Before you take that decision, seek godly counsel. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a season. The thing that you are looking for has a time stamp on it by the Lord. This is the month of March. Perhaps there are some things you are desiring that this month it must come. If March is the time that God has appointed, may you receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. But if March is not, be careful not to get worried. When you get the blessing too soon, sooner than it is meant, it can lead to sorrow. This young boy wanted the blessing sooner than he should, and he ended up in sorrow. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. The grace to wait for the season of God, may God grant unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not make a decision you will live to regret. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. It makes everything beautiful in its time. So the question for you, my brother and my sister, when do you want the blessing? Your time or God's time? When do you want it? Then rise on your feet and say, Lord, I will wait for your time. I will wait for your time. Talk to the Lord. I will wait for your time. Your time is always the best. Father, I will wait. I will wait for your time. Because you make all things beautiful in your time. The grace to wait. Father, grant unto me. Grant unto me to wait for your time. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Number two. 
walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. That young man saw some good life and he wanted to get what he saw. You see, when he went to his father and said, give me my own portion, it's not because of the money, it's because he wanted a lifestyle that he saw in some people. Be careful what you see and don't let your life be driven by what you see. I told them, don't inform Simon, more than 90% of the time, what you see is packaging. What is it? Look at the person sitting next to you. That may not be the real person. Look again, just don't look again. That may not be the real person. What you are seeing is, it is packaging. That's all you are seeing is packaging. That little boy saw a lot of packaging. He said, Lord, I can't wait to, Father, I can't wait. Me too, I want that lifestyle. He did not know that human eye cannot see the full story. You see the person sitting next to you, if they open up and tell you what they are going through, you say, ha, and you are dressed like this? Write this down. You don't see the full story. Write it down. You don't see the full story. You don't. Also write this down. You can't see the full story. In spite of your best effort, it is impossible for you to see the full story. Somebody went recently, some months ago, to get counsel. He said, this is my husband. I don't know that I want to continue. And then the wife, the pastor called the husband. What is going on with you? The husband told the man of God, I don't think I want to continue in this marriage. <laughs> By the time the man of God was speaking, he said, my wife and I too just went through whether we should separate. You see, you don't see the full story. And you can't see the full story. Walk by Walk by faith, not by sight. Genesis chapter 13, verse 9 to 11. Genesis 13, verse 9 to 11. A man called Lot made a choice that destroyed his destiny. This is not about Lot. This is about you. Just in case you are about to make a decision. Don't be guided by what you see. Abraham said to Lot, you and I don't need to quarrel, Lot. God has more than enough blessing for all of us. Choose wherever you want, Lot. And whatever remains, I will manage. That's what is called walking by faith. The Bible said Lot looked around. Uh, let's, uh, let's look at it. Lot looked around. Genesis 13, verse 9 to 11. It's not the whole land before us. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou would take the left hand, then I will take the... Abraham is saying, it doesn't... You pick whatever you want. I will manage what is left. Many of us are too quick to make a choice. Lord, if you take what is on the right, I will take what is on the left. If you take what is on the left, I will manage what is on the right. Lot was not wise enough. He said, Abraham, that's a very good comment. That, 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 what you just said makes sense. And then he looked around, and the Bible said, he saw, verse 10, he saw, Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld the plain of Jordan. How it was well, well, 
He looked so beautiful. And he said to Abraham, I choose that side. That is the side I want. He entered into one chance. Your eyes, your eyes cannot see the full story. I pray for somebody here today. The grace to walk by faith and not by sight. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. The story of Lot ended sorrowfully because he, make, he made a decision by sight. Please rise on your feet one more time. Don't say my own is too much. I want you to pray. And say, Lord, guide me yourself. Lord, guide me yourself. Don't let me walk into sorrow. Don't let me destroy my own life. Guide me yourself. Talk to God. You don't see the full story. And you can't see the full story. Lord, guide me yourself. Guide me yourself. Don't let me make decisions based on what I see. Don't let me make decisions based on what I think. Help me to rest in you, Lord. Help me to walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I pray for every one of you. As you allow Jesus to lead you, may your joy truly be full in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, break the chain of sorrow. Break the chain of sorrow. Break the chain of sorrow. In Luke 15, verse 17 to 18, I'll just paraphrase. That young man discovered he had made a mistake. And he said, ah, it was an error. I shouldn't have hurried out of my father's house. I was deceived by what I saw. He said, rather than me continuing in this sorrow, I will break the chain of this sorrow. Please listen very well before I close on this point. I want to ask you three questions. Is your joy full concerning your career or your business? Question number one. Is your joy full concerning your career or your business? Is your joy full concerning your marriage or your relationships, the relationship you are, you are in? Question number two. Question number three, is your joy full concerning your finances? If your joy is not full, then break the chain of that sorrow. Like that young man, he had a choice to continue to struggle or to turn and go in the path of joy. You know you are here and somehow your joy is not full. You know it. Whether it's in your career, it's in your relationships, it's in your marriage, or it's in your finances, your joy is not full. Please lift up that hand wherever you are. God bless you. Just keep it up. Keep it up. God bless you. God bless you. Keep it up. God bless you. God bless you. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. Today, what you need to do for your joy to be full, may God reveal unto you in Jesus' name. That boy, the Bible said, arose. He went to his father and said, Father, I made a mistake. It was his acknowledgement that he made a mistake that opened the door for his joy to be full. If that boy had continued in the land where he was, trying to struggle his way through, he would have died in sorrow. I'm not even going to go to point number four. I want to close with this one. Please turn with me to Genesis chapter 3, verse 11 to 13. And then we pray. 
Who told you that you are naked? This is God asking Adam. Who, who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten the tree? Have you done what I told you not to do? Verse 12. Adam said, The woman that thou givest me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Let me try to explain this verse 12 to you as the Holy Spirit explained it. The life of Adam would have ended better than it did. If Adam had said, Lord, I am sorry. I made a mistake. I did what I should not have done. God will have forgiven Adam. And Adam will have continued to live in the Garden of Eden. You see, there is a Garden of Eden that is ready for you. That is duly yours. It belongs to you. There is a joy that God has prepared for you. But until you give up this spirit in Adam. Do you know Adam never took responsibility for his sin? Till today. Adam never accepted responsibility for his sin. And because of that, he lost the Garden of Eden. He was kicked out. The message of God for you, the day you recognize that you are part of the problem, the day your joy will be full. You see that young boy? He said to his father, I got it wrong. I made a mistake. And the father said, come. I will celebrate you. Adam blamed two people for his suffering. Two people. Who are the people that Adam blamed? God and... Adam said, you're asking me the question, are you not the one who gave me this woman? The two of you are responsible for my situation. Your joy can never be full until you take responsibility. Because you are part of the problem and you must be a part of the solution. Let me say it again. You are part of the problem and you must be a part of the solution. All eyes closed. You are here this morning. You're saying, Pastor, it is true. I am tired of struggling. I want to return to my father. I want to give my life to Jesus so that he can save me. He can help me. Don't try to struggle on your own. You are not strong enough to struggle through life. If you say, Lord, I come unto you, I need help. He will help you. Please rise on your feet. I want to pray for you as you take the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. When you make that decision, your journey to joy has just become begun. You are not good enough on your own. Come, come. I want to pray to with you. Follow Jesus. You need him. You need him. I have decided the boy says, I'm going to back to my father. Jesus. I need my father for my joy to be full. I can't do it on my own. You have to take that decision. You have to take this decision. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Come, come. Keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Do you want to struggle through life on your own? Or do you want to acknowledge that you cannot make it on your own? Keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. I have decided. You need Jesus. Follow Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. No turning back. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you, my sister. Keep coming. Keep coming. No one joins me. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Keep coming. Keep coming. 
God bless you. Keep coming. Still I will follow. Keep coming. Keep coming. No one joins me. Still I will follow. Keep coming. No turning back. God bless you, my brother. Come, come. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Make it on my own. I am decided to follow Jesus. I can't make it on my own. And tried. The Bible said he even tried. He said he went to another man. Said, "Let me be your servant. Let me be working for everything he tried. Did not work until he went back to his father. You don't have to struggle. All you need to do is surrender to Jesus, and you will get the grace that is bigger than your own power. Please come. I want to. I want to pray with you. You are still sitting down there. You have been trying, struggling on your own." You have not succeeded. Why don't you surrender your life to Jesus? Come, come, I want to pray for you. Come, come, come. You don't need to struggle through life. Come to your father. Come to your father. God bless you. Come. Come to your father. Come to your father. Give me Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Come. God bless you, my sister. Come. I'm satisfied. God bless you, my brother. Come, I'm come. Satisfied. I have decided. I have come, come, come. To follow Jesus. Come. after me, my Lord Jesus. I need you. I cannot make it on my own. I surrender my life to you. Please save me. Help me. Let my joy be full. Go ahead and talk to God. I need you, Lord Jesus. I cannot make it on my own. I surrender my life unto you completely. Save me. Help me. Let my joy be full. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, I commit your sons and your daughters into your hands. And as many as are giving their lives online as well, all over the world, accept them into your kingdom in Jesus' name and the grace that is bigger than their power released upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. From this very day, let their joy be full. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Just in case you are the one God is speaking to today, Abraham had a chance to break the chain of sorrow and he failed. He had a chance to, to break that chain and remain in the Garden of Eden. He failed and he was driven out. I'm going to ask you to come forward if you believe that you are part of the problem. Your joy may not be full in marriage. Maybe you are struggling through marriage. There, there is no joy in your marriage. Or you are struggling in your career. Today is up, tomorrow is down. Your business is struggling. Your finances are struggling. Just in case you know that you are part of the problem, you can come to God and say, yes, I am part of the problem. Like that boy did. He said, I will go to my father and tell him I made a mistake. And as he went to his father, the father embraced him 
welcome him back. Just in case you are part of the problem and you are ready to take responsibility, your joy will be full once again. I say, Father, I agree that I am part of the problem. I agree that I have to be part of the solution. Help me, Lord. Go ahead and talk to God. Talk to the Lord. Your journey has begun to the land of your promise. You have just started your journey to great joy. I agree, Lord, that I am part of the problem. And I agree that I have to be part of the solution. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, I thank you for the power in your word. As many, Lord, as I have come forward because of your word, that truly they are part of the problem and they will be part of the solution. The same way you embraced the prodigal son and you celebrated him and made his joyful. Everyone that has come forward right now, here on site and online, make their joy full in Jesus' name. And I pray for you, everything that you have lost, much more you will get back in Jesus' name. And so shall it be. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God bless you.